Chair, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure being here in Portugal. Uh, I've been writing a lot about uh, the so-called Judge Portuguese's ruling uh, in my writing, so finally nice to meet some of the key actors involved in this litigation. I have many friends also in the audience, so it's nice to see them after a long period of time spent behind the computer screen. And today, I've decided to do something unusual rather than attempting to give you a long, um, broad uh, presentation of an academic nature about structural challenges to judicial independence in Europe. I'm going to ask you uh, to stay with me and imagine possibly a fictional country. So bear with me. Uh, it's going to make sense in the end eventually. Um, imagine. So, let me ask you to please imagine a country whose government routinely refuses to publish and implement fully multiple rulings of the national constitutional court it disagrees with. Imagine a country whose national authorities appoint several individuals to the constitutional court at 1.30 in the morning, a few hours before the same court was due to hear a case regarding the constitutionality of their nominations. Imagine a country whose national authorities appoint an acting president of the Constitutional Court in manifest breach of the national constitution so as to organize the capture of this court from within. Imagine a country whose ruling coalition forces a legislative, changes, uh, force a legislative change in the early hours on a Friday with that notice to void pending cases challenging the legality of the manifestly irregular judicial appointments made by the same ruling coalition via a manifestly unconstitutionally re-established National Council for the Judiciary. Imagine a country whose president openly disregards several freezing orders of the National Supreme Administrative Court in order to force through a dozen of unlawful nominations to the National Supreme Court in particular to two new chambers of the Supreme Court which are not lawfully established. Imagine a country whose president's re-election was subsequently validated by the same people he unlawfully appointed to one of these two chambers uh, in blatant defiance of the rule of law according to the European Court of Human Rights. Imagine a country whose national authorities try to forcibly retire the President of the Supreme Court on the basis of a retroactive uh, lowering of the retirement age, notwithstanding the constitutional provision providing for a fixed term for this President of the Supreme Court. Imagine a country whose national authorities issue official instructions to ignore the National Supreme Court's rulings. Imagine a country whose national authorities organize the mass dismissal of presidents and vice presidents of ordinary courts without any specific criteria, without justification, and without judicial review being made available. Imagine a country whose prime minister equates judges with Nazi era collaborators. Imagine a country where a deputy justice minister equates the implementation of a new European mechanism enabling the suspension of funding in case of generalized deficiencies as regards the rule of law as akin to the implementation of the Fourth Reich. Imagine a country whose ruling coalition promotes a vision whereby judges are expected to be always on the side of the state, with the conduct of judges being described as dangerous whenever they turn against the legislative and executive authorities. Imagine a country where a secret troll farm is set up within a Ministry of Justice. So within the Ministry of Justice, you have a secret unit so as to organize smear campaigns against judges defending the rule of law, all the while the government is publicly claiming that they have never undermined the legitimacy of the Supreme Court, ordinary courts, ordinary judges, either individually or collectively. Imagine a country where authorities adopt a grossly unconstitutional law so as to give themselves the opportunity to discipline judges at will for the content, the actual content of their rulings. Imagine a country where national authorities launch disciplinary investigations against judges who submit requests to the Court of Justice for a preliminary ruling and actually suspend them 
and pay and cut their wages when they do so. And do the same against any judge applying ECJ rulings regarding related to the principle of effective judicial protection. Imagine a country where manifestly bogus criminal investigations or criminal proceedings are launched against judges disliked by the Prosecutor General, who is also simultaneously the Minister of Justice on the back of a piece of legislation which the Venice Commission has described as organizing a system with such wide and unchecked powers that such a system is unacceptable in a state governed by the rule of law. Imagine a country where 1,000 out of 6,100 prosecutors are dismissed within a few months following the entry into force of this, such a piece of legislation. Imagine a country where independent-minded prosecutors are being punished by being posted to new places that are far away from where they live in the midst of a lockdown, in the midst of a pandemic, with that advance not notice. Imagine a country where the Prosecutor General wants to prosecute 1,278 judges at once. Why? For signing a letter to the OSCE highlighting the planned holding of a manifestly irregular presidential election. Imagine a country where the same Prosecutor General is investigating multiple Supreme Court judges, including the former President of the Supreme Court and the actual sitting president of the criminal chamber of the Supreme Court. Imagine a country where a judge has been unable to adjudicate for over 650 days, with his pay cut by 25% for attempting, following his attempt to apply a judgment of the Court of Justice, and where national judgments reinstating unlawfully suspended judges are routinely ignored and violated by the authorities. Imagine a country where national authorities routinely violate national rulings applying ECJ and or ECHR judgments relating to the fundamental right to an independent tribunal established by law and consider them unconstitutional or non-existent or both at the same time. Imagine a country where the unlawfully composed body calling itself the Constitutional Tribunal is used by authorities to give a veneer of constitutionality to what amounts in practice to the systemic violation of constitutional EU and ECHR requirements relating to judicial independence at once. Imagine a country where due to the cumulative effect of repeated, repeated legislative changes affecting judiciary, the executive and the legislative powers can interfere at will for that the entire structure and every single judicial output of the system. This country is not a fictional one. This country is a member state of the EU. This country is Poland under the rule of the, rule of the so called Law and Justice Party. Every single example that I've asked you to imagine is actually based on actual concrete violations clearly established to this day. The first president of Poland Supreme Court in 2019 stated, the end result is that the rule of law in Poland is not simply at risk, it is being erased, and that was 2019. What has been the EU's reaction in the face of sustained deliberate annihilation of judicial independence in a broader context of a systemic dismantlement of all checks and balances making Poland's the most autocratizing country in the world in 2021 ahead of Orban's Hungary, according to VDEM experts, according to democracy experts. Well, you may or may not be surprised that the guardian of the treaties has launched a grand total of four infringement actions in six years, so less than one per year, when on average the commission does initiate about 800 infringement actions, so less than one per year. I guess that's what they mean by no compromise when it comes to the rule of law. The Commission also activated Article 7, Paragraph 1 of the TEU in December 2017, leading the Council of the EU to organize a grand total of four formal hearings to date. By contrast, Polish judges 
have submitted a total of 36 preliminary ruling requests, raising the most fundamental serious judicial independence issues. At the price, I'm sad to say, of their careers, well-being, and in some cases, their own livelihood and personal safety. Similarly, Romanian, Maltese, and Hungarian judges have attempted the same and faced, in most cases, reprisals when raising similarly fundamental judicial independence issues, which the Commission did not bother challenge directly in its capacity of guardian of the treaties. Writing in 2018, I warned that the situation in Poland has deteriorated further to the point of threatening the functioning of the entire EU legal order, and therefore the future of the EU's internal market itself. I'm afraid this is no longer a threat, but a clear and present danger. Poland, as far as I'm concerned, should now be considered to borrow an expression from the financial world as a country in default from a rule of law point of view. Following the recent state of constitutionalized lawlessness organized via the unlawfully composed puppet body known as the Constitutional Tribunal of Poland, Polish authorities should now be considered as having de facto positioned the country outside the EU's legal order. Looking beyond Poland, the consolidation of the EU's first non-democratic, aka authoritarian country, that is Orbán's Hungary, where we are seeing essentially the foundation being consolidated for the progressive autocratic gangrenization of the EU's decision-making processes, not to forget the EU institutions themselves. On current trajectory, it is only a matter of time before the worsening process of democratic and rule of law backsliding within happening within the EU eventually triggers a knock-on process of legal disintegration. Only a matter of time. One may only hope that the Commission and the Council will stop denying this unforgiving reality, stop claiming that the Union is a union of democracies. This is no longer true, I'm afraid and stop pretending that dialogue and reports will help address what is a clear and present danger for the survival of the EU legal order. Last month, in a very important speech, which I would highly recommend you uh, to read if you haven't done so already, the President of the Court of Justice of the EU made a very unprecedented intervention uh, at the FIDE conference he stated that it is no exaggeration to say that the EU's foundations as a union based on the rule of law are under threat and that the very survival of the European project in its current form is at stake. The very survival of the European project. Very stark warning from the sitting president of the Court of Justice of the EU. One may only hope, and let me conclude on this note, that the Commission and the Council will heed this unprecedented warning by the President of the Court of Justice before we eventually reach a tipping point and see the EU's interconnected legal ecosystem collapsing due to the accelerating destruction of the independence of judiciary we are witnessing most shockingly in Poland. Time is not on the side of the rule of law. Thank you very much.